Welcome to Barefoot Miniatures and my guide and review of the Book of the Outlands. And this is part one of which I'm going to go over the Ironhead Prospectors. Now I'm going to do multiple parts of this because this is actually a massive book to sink your teeth into. So it needs splitting up, which isn't such a bad thing. I'm really happy with the book as a very quick, because this will be the first video out, as a very quick overarching review i'm really happy with it it solves my problems with the ash wastes um so yeah we'll get into the gang guide and some sample lists at the end stick around for that so the iron head prospectors are a gang or crew i suppose now specifically because they're all cutting around in vehicles uh yeah they're a, they're a crew of prospectors that are cleaning up the ash wastes very slowly and making massive profits while doing so. This is a gang that's mainly for the ash waste style campaigns, like obviously being in the Outlands book. It's going to be like that. Um, you can play them in Dominion. Um, they count as Orlocks for mine working territories and Escher for Sin. I got it right! Sin still, yes. I can remember this. So. Yeah, we're just going to get straight into what do I think they do well. Like, having written, I've written a few lists, I've not yet played this gang, that is my disclaimer. I might come, I'll come back to them when I've played some games, which will be in the, in the future. I can't be more specific on that. They're a very elite gang. You're not going to have the numbers there that other gangs do. I think with some good equipment, they are about six models strong. If I really cut down on equipment, you could maybe inflate that to, I don't know, like eight, nine models, but then you're gonna have like basic for the gang equipment on them. Now, what are they actually good to balance out that they're a very elite gang? They have massive access to the rapid fire ability of weapons. Most of their weapons are more expensive than regular weapons, but gain an extra rapid fire dice. So an iron head auto gun, fires two rapid fire dice worth of shots, which makes the auto gun, I think, a really good weapon. It's, it also applies to flamers as well. So if you get flamers in there, there, and this is a new firestorm trait on weapons that they have, uh, you roll the fire, firepower dice as you normally would to see if you go out of ammo and apply that amount of hits to the first model hit in the template. So there's some really, really powerful abilities on weapons they do hit on threes for their champions so it's not like enforcers which hit on fours so they they have the toys and they know how to use them going in you'll see that demonstrated as we go through the list the other thing is that their toughness four as a staple across the gang and who didn't see that coming it was dwarves in space which i obviously said that wrong is dwarves in space yeah toughness four across the board so they're really tough, hard to take down like like Goliaths, except now with better shooting. So I think this gang could actually be, at first impression, quite good for a beginner. You've got your tough characters. You've got a clear direction of where to go, I think. It's, it's not a combat gang. It's a shooting gang um, that can also have one or two nasty things that you can do in combat. They're tough enough to stick around. They, they've got good cool values. I don't think they're quite as good as Goliaths, but still good cool values, high toughness. So I, I think it could be quite good. There's not loads to remember. They've got, a, you're gonna have a solid game plan at the outset is I think, I think that's the key to a beginner gang. It's not whether it's excellent if you really push the limits of the gang. The key to a beginner gang, or not a beginner gang, but a, a beginner friendly gang, is whether you've got a clear direction. Like Goliaths, you're all about the combat. It's a good beginner gang. You you know what you got you want to do, so you just do that, and you, then you can learn the rules around that. These, I think you've got a clear direction, you've got the high toughness, and yeah, it's, I, I think it will be a good gang to get into Necromunda. If you want to jump into Necromunda, this is a good point and good gang to jump in with. So the gang leader, it's 115 credits, pretty standard. He comes with movement four, which is basic across the board for 
uh, squat prospectors. He has weapon skill and ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 3, toughness 4, 3 wounds. Now, initiative 5, which is really bad. You're going to be falling off things a lot. If you climb up any platforms and you get hit with a weapon and go prone, you're going to be falling off. And luckily, there's something to mitigate that. But, <laughs> yeah, these, it's not the greatest initiative I've ever seen. Attacks 2... Pretty standard, it's nothing nothing to shout about. Obviously, it's just a standard champion or leader stat. Leadership five, cool five, willpower five, and intelligence six. Now he's not got any fours like some of the other leaders have, but I say that was a, a solid stat line for a leader. On you two because they're your two dice checks, you're averaging a seven, you're gonna be passing those. Cool five, especially, is good. The leader's three wounds is massive. Like I've Having played Orlocks with them three wounds, having toughness four and three wounds to keep them sticking around. Well, skill access, I'll get into that and I'll say why it's not as brilliant. I was expecting these guys to have ferocity because I would expect them to be hard to kill with true grit, unstoppable. I'd expect them to be stubborn with nerves of steel. But no, you your skills are actually for the leader, brawn, which is out there and shooting and your wisdom of the ancients is secondary um leadership is also primary so you've got brawn leadership and shooting combat savant and wisdom of the ancient secondary brawn i hate the brawn <laughs> skill set i mean i i couldn't even remember what he did because i immediately dismissed it when we first started playing necromunda and I don't think I was wrong in doing so, having come back to it to look at it again. The hurl skill is hilarious, but it's it's just not good enough, really. Like, so I think you're gonna need your inload spikes to get that <laughs> to get that nose of steel or something on these guys, if you want to do some combat with them, and get them some friends on collars. Leadership shooting, they're very solid skill sets. I don't massively like overseer, which devalues leadership a little bit, but you can give him. Iron Will, so that you're sticking around longer. Shooting, obviously excellent, absolutely excellent. My, as you as we will talk about as we go over the weapons list, I actually really like shooting for Gunfighter on this guy in particular. Now that's because in your pistol weapons, you have your Iron Head weapons. So it makes bolt pistols rapid fire one so gunfighter with two bolt pistols at rapid fire one and ballistic skill three plus so you six inch short range don't think that's changed since normal bolt pistols you're going to be hitting on twos with that gunfighter which is really scary you can just run into the middle of some people and unload on them two bolt pistols firing so two bolt pistols almost the same price as their bolt gun but who who doesn't love the fact that they can have two pistols and fire them like bolt guns? So the Iron Head Auto Gun, I wouldn't put it on a leader. It's it's a solid choice for anyone in any other gang. Really good, in fact, because of its two rapid fire dice. But with this being your leader, I'd splash out a bit more. Is essentially it. So it comes down like the bolt gun is a bolt gun with two ammo dice. It's ninety five credits, so it's. It's really steep, which gives this gang its eliteness. It is very hard to squeeze in a lot of gangers when you get start getting some bolt guns. And the Iron Head Auto Gun and Bolt Gun are the only two basic weapons on the entire list. Yeah, so it's you know, like you've got a choice, Auto Gun or Bolt Gun. I think you want at least one Bolt Gun, because two rapid fire dice on a Bolt Gun. Then working down the list, Iron Head Auto Pistol, again... I wouldn't start on it on this on this leader. Bolt pistols. Really love the idea of that. Iron head hand flamer. A blaze firestorm one template. So it's just the same as a normal hand flamer, but has the squat standard extra rapid fire dice, basically. And that's one of the things, it makes flame weapons really scary. One of the problems I find with flame weapons in my own campaigns is only doing that one hit to that one ganger. I know you can catch multiple in the template, but failing to wound one of them 
can be deadly for your flamer person. Whereas having that firestorm as a special rule magnifies how good that flame weapon is. Next, you've got the Iron Head Stub Gun. The same as a stub gun, but with rapid fire, but it loses plentiful. Um, that can take dum dum rounds, which is solid 15 points for a rapid fire almost bolt gun. Uh, I'd be tempted by that on anyone but the leader. A stone burner, a two inch, four inch long range strength five melter. So if you get within two inches, it has the melter trait. So you can just pop someone. The downside to this is it's 70 credits. You could have an extra ganger with their two rapid fire dice auto guns for that. Do I think it's worth it? Now, it can be used in melee because it is a sidearm. So it's potentially good for that, but it is a lot of credits. When you can already fire your bolt, your rapid fire bolt pistols in close combat, it feels like a lot for something that you can already do very powerfully. Now, special weapons, as we've gone over, Iron Head Flamer, rap, that's a rapid fire flamer. I think really good, potentially puts your leader in too much harm's way. Um, Iron Head Melter Gun, rapid fire Melter Gun, could just end campaigns if this comes off a few times. If you get in Melter range, you could end a gang because of the multiple injury dice rolled for a Melter at short range. So everyone should go out and do it, is what I think. Heavy Weapons, Iron Head, Heavy Flamer. Suffers from the same problems as a Heavy Flamer. You need that suspenser. So just 270 credits for the Iron Head Heavy Flamer. I steer clear of that option. Massively clear. Iron Head Heavy Stubber, 140 credits. With the suspenser, you're going to 200. Would I take that over an Iron Head Bolt Gun? I think the bolt gun is just superior to either of those heavy weapons. Having two rapid fire dice on a bolt gun, adding the extra one is only a 50% increase to get to three on the heavy stubber. So I'm I'm convinced the, the iron head bolt gun is just far more worth it for these squat prospectors. Mining laser. Now, this is where it gets interesting and this is where the gang being an Outland-based gang really comes into it. I think you potentially need a mining laser on someone because it's got a few points of damage, it's high strength. If someone starts with one of the rock grinders or something like that, which is light vehicle, I think you need something high strength to punch through that with high damage. Close combat weapons. You've got Circular Stone Saw, Fighting Knife Standard. Um, circular Stone Saw is plus one strength, minus one AP, one damage, rending, and it fits on your power pack. You've got a Fighting Knife, Gem Extractor, which is plus one strength, minus one AP, two damage power pack. Iron Head Arc Welder, power pack again, plus two strength, minus two AP, three damage. So this is where you get into the really high damage sections, but it's 100 credits. I think it's potentially worth taking when you get into the later stages of the campaign. When you have 100 credits to spend on a close combat weapon for a character you know is largely gonna be shooting, which is a weird thing to say, but that's when this becomes useful. And there is that point in campaigns. I think it comes into its own if, say, you have a heavy weapon, especially, that takes up two slots. The power pack rule means it doesn't take up one of your weapon slots. So you could have a heavy weapon, a power pick, and one of these iron head arc welders or a gem extractor. You could even have the stone burner. I suppose this is where it comes in when it's sidearm. You've got you flowing in creds. <laughs> you, you start getting these power pack things to keep you safe in combat. And it makes it does make you much scarier. Would I go for the gem extractor? Sorry, the iron head arc welder over the stone burner, thinking of it like that. They put in the pistol section, the stone burner confusing me. But I think I'd go for the stone burner. I think the stone burner with that melter rule, you're always always in the short range when you're in close combat. You can for 140 credits take two stone burners. I think I'd just go for the stone burner. Like 
power wise the stone burner in combat then getting onto the standard power axe you can start with the power fist which is really good power hammer or power pick speaking of the arc welder and stone burner in a sort of what's the actual best sense i'm going to say power pick because you're a prospector you've got to go with the pick it's the best thing that fits on these prospectors uh sadly they don't have anything like a two-handed hammer or anything like that they've got the power hammer but that's one-handed so you can't have a massive hammer like the one that i've seen floating about on facebook yeah but i think we we know the power pick is the way to go out of that actual list war gear they get pretty standard war gear across the board um you get access to light carapace straight away but no undersuit which is pretty common amongst at least all locks except the arms master you get smoke grenade access straight away on this guy which, there's nothing surprising in the in the war gear list it's all weapons that is the key to this prospector gang so what skills would I put on this guy other than just my fly-off comment of gunfighter? Fast shot will be incredible on this guy. A rapid-fire bolt gun firing twice. Sorry, a double rapid-fire bolt gun, I suppose. Firing twice, so four total dice is going to be really painful on the other side of it. Hip shooting, I really, really like as an action. You, to be able to double move and then fire a double rapid fire dice bolt gun is always powerful i love it to be able to just double move into a room and gun someone down when they're not expecting it marksman precision shot trick shot all good precision shot less good is trick shot is potentially one to go like i think my my order of these is so long as you've not got two pistols in which case there's an obvious choice it's hip shooting fast shot trick shot and that's because Getting into the close range with hip shooting, being able to run around corners when people aren't expecting it, it gives that mobility to the bolt gun that I think people won't be expecting you'll get into the short range. I think that I really like hip shooting as a skill. It's potentially my favourite skill that isn't something ridiculous. On to the prospectors list. Now, this is where it becomes a bit weird. So, Wisdom of the Ancients Prospector's skill list. They've got, where's the scrap, where's the creds? So, in the receive reward step of the post-battle phase, you receive an additional D6 times 10 creds for each vehicle belonging to the opposing gang that you've wrecked. Obviously, very situational to Outlands, of which this is an Outlands gang needs to be in the campaign with vehicles it's it's going to be very good when these vehicles are around very very good when these vehicles are around because it magnifies massively the amount of cred you get you don't even need to be taking part in the battle to gain the additional d6910 you just need to not be captured and not be in recovery um you've got nobody pushes kin around a fighter with this skill automatically passes any initiative test to avoid falling when standing, going standing to prone within half inch of an edge. Now that's massive. That completely negates your initiative penalty. Would I take it? No, not at the start. I, I, I think there's better skills that you need to be doing offensively than the no one pushes kin around. I think it's a good thing to have when you start getting more and more XP, which from your rapid fire bolt guns, you should be swimming in. Chemical bonds never break. The fighter may use a chem twice before it's removed from their fighter card. Now, this is something that encourages you to spend a load of money. I'd like it if you're going to go down the friends on route to gain a load of the ferocity skills. But it because it requires that cred investment to make it usable even, I don't think it's the best of skills. Dependable like kin, you ignore the unstable weapon trait and re-roll any ammo dice they take. I don't like this one. I'd much prefer taking Munition Air, especially as it's second. These on the leader, both of these are secondary, Savant and Wisdom of the Ancients. Stubborn to the last, 
when you take an out of action, you get to make either a shoot or a fight basic action, if you, even if you don't have a ready marker. This is really good, but not as a primary skill or not as the first skill that you take. I really like it to just have that last, <laughs> fuck you. It makes them a lot more scary even when you take them out. And then there's always another secret. When this fighter opens a loot casket, they add an additional D6 times 10 to their gang's stash. Now this starts magnifying the amount of creds you get, especially in an Outlands campaign where loot caskets are about, if you're playing campaigns, with loot caskets about in the regular Dominion campaign. Yeah, that is my rundown of the leader. Next, on to squat champions. Now, they're largely the same. They've not got the three wounds that the leader has. The champion, toughness four, two wounds. It's only weapon skill four. Leadership six, cool six, will six, intelligence seven is the main change from the leader, other than the obvious loss of the wound. Um, so, skill access here, you've got Brawn and Wisdom in the Ancients as primary, and then you've got Shooting, Leadership and Ferocity as secondary. Now, I actually really don't like those two as primaries. <laughs> Other than the credits gaining Wisdom of the Ancient skills, I wouldn't pick any from the start on that list. Brawn, as I've said, is terrible. It can lead to the hilarious hurls, but I don't think those are... This is where the squats are let down a little bit, is that their skill set isn't amazing. Like, stubborn to the last, I'd possibly take if... Because I think credits can spiral in Necromunda campaigns. It's a real big problem, at least in the campaigns that I've played. That There is such frequent access to credits. And that will actually be solving it, hopefully, in the next campaign. And yet, it's being forced to take a good skill of gaining more credits. At least it's situational, but... It's just not something I like. What would I take on these guys? Now, this is where I'd take my, my mining laser. I'd potentially take my melter gun here. Um, you've got a better ballistic skill, so not. I wouldn't take the flamer here because you want to capitalise on that better ballistic skill. Um, the weapons are largely the same as the leader, but... You've not got access to the shooting, so I wouldn't put your double bolt gun here. I'd put that on the lead. Sorry, double bolt pistol. I'd put that on the leader. It's a bit of a hard one, but I suppose it's because this gang is centred around its equipment more than its skill set. And you have all the options there. You can do pretty much what you want with these guys, and they're going to do it well. It really throws me about their skill access. Next, the Prospector's Drillkin, which is the basic gangers. Big change here again. Ballistic skill down to four. You've still got cool of six plus, which is solid. You start with a specialist like everyone else does. You don't get access to heavy weapons on this one like Vansar or Orlox. But you've got your bolt gun there. That is the, the staple of this list. Auto guns, again, really solid. They, I would start taking them here. These guys will be absolutely nails. Running around with double rapid fire bolt guns and auto guns. They will be a really solid choice. Toughness 4. As I say, definitely believe that they're a shooting gang because they've not got the strength in combat to do much. If you put dual pistol on someone, that mitigates that to an extent. Um, and by extent, I mean completely. Yeah, I, I think these guys are going to be really good. You've got smoke grenade access from the start. You have blasting charge access from the start. I'd, I'd end up repeating myself about the skill, sorry, the weapon sets again. You specialists, interestingly, get shooting as a primary and brawn as a primary. Now, that specialist with shooting as primary, hip shooting, definitely back on the table. You've not got any reason not to take dual bolt pistol with gunfighter because these are more sacrificial guys as well. I really like, yeah, I really like shooting on a specialist because you can just play about with these guys. I know it's not from the start, but much more expendable guys than your champions. And yeah, this this is where I would put my flamer. If I was going to go flamer with that rapid fire, this is where it would come. They've got worse ballistic skill than your champions, obviously. Um, so you're not losing out by missing the to hit step. Whereas on your champions, you would be. Yeah, you'll, you'll see in my rundown of my lists, on my list, 
what I would give to these guys. But pretty much any of those are really good. Even the stub guns with Dum Dum. 15 credits for a stub gun with Dum Dum. And it's strength for rapid fire is just really good. Now, Juve's. Now, these are an interesting one because in this list, the Juve has access to basic weapons. They get the auto gun, they get the bolt gun, as is standard across the entire list. However, going to weapon skill, ballistic skill 5, 35 creds, weapon skill, ballistic skill 5, that's the same price as most people's gangers and you've got worse weapon skill, ballistic skill. Although your toughness is higher, you still have 8 for leadership, 7 for cool, 6 for willpower, 7 for intelligence. So it's pretty good mental stats. Or I say pretty good, average mental stats. But still, it's 15 credits to get a normal prospect to ganger. Save this for getting it free from a settlement, is what I would say. In your Dominion campaign, at least. Shooting primary. Double stub gum dum dum. And their stub gun's obviously rapid fire. So you're hitting on threes. You're hitting on fours if you don't have the gun fighting. Oh, 65 credits for that guy. I think I'd go, I, I think I'd go for it. 65 credits for that. Yes. That is such a fun combination of a guy that you don't care about. Last in the list is the gearhead, which is the Ironhead Prospector's crewman. Now, they've got a ballistic skill 4 plus, leadership 7, cool 6. So the cool's still good, as you would expect off a space dwarf. Willpower 6, intelligence 7. Driving, shooting as their primaries. Um, and they get access to light vehicles from the go. Uh, custom vehicles, ridge runners, rock grinders, and wolf, wolf quads. They have access to auto pistol, bolt pistol, stub gun, or the iron head varieties. I think it's pretty solid. A rock grinder is actually a light vehicle. And a rock grinder is front, side, rear, 776. Its hull points is four. So that's actually a pretty solid vehicle until people are getting the, the really high strength, high damage weapons. It's actually really solid. So I'd really recommend that. Is I also quite like the idea of the wolf quad. Just to run about, you can get really fast into a rapid firing bolt pistols range as a starting thing. So yeah, I think the rock grinder is a really good choice. You need the one crewman to start with. You've got something to stand on the back of as a firing platform in the waist. You can be rolling about on that and doing what you want. You can jump off it and get into your bolt pistol shot range or even cruise past with your bolt pistols doing a drive-by. Having just this one big vehicle doesn't work against them. So you get your your elite gang, one vehicle with transport bed. And I actually think, yeah, he's starting with one vehicle as a squat gang is fine. Whereas some of the other gangs, I would say, start with bikes, start with wolf quads, start with all like outrider quads. Do I think the Ridge Runner is great for squats? He's got side and rear toughness four, front toughness five. It puts me off a little bit, but as you get more creds, it gives you that speed that squats lack. You see, I don't like bikes on quad on squats because of the the checks that you have to do based on initiative. Now we'll go over custom vehicles and the vehicles in more detail in another video um, as soon as I can possibly wrap my head around the vehicle rules, like the create your own. So then finally, the special brute that the squats get is the squat prospector Vartigen, Vartigen Exodriller. Why did I struggle to say that so much? It's not even that hard of a word. I actually really like these guys. they 250 creds. Um, available only to iron heads, obviously. You've got movement four, standard for your gang. Weapon skill four, pretty standard. Ballistic skill three, which is getting up there, especially for a brute. Strength four, toughness five. Um, weapon, which, it's early. I'm doing this review very early in the morning. Um, wounds three, initiative five up, attacks two, leadership seven, cool six, willpower six, intelligence seven. And you come armed with a Vartigen Fist, Vartigen Heavy Flamer, Seismic Crusher. You're also equipped with light carapace and you can equip them with a heavy bolter instead of the heavy flamer. 
Now, why I like them is you've got that carapace armor that's really solid. A Vartage and Heavy Flamer, which is a two damage um, ammo five up Heavy Flamer, which has got the Firestorm rule, which is the squats, uh, Rapid Fire Flamer rule. So it really synergistically works with trying to get your Brutes into combat. It means people don't want to come near you. The, like the Iron Head Heavy Flamer with the, the Suspenser, I think, is a, it's a bit overly expensive. Here, Brutes are already expensive luxuries. So we already know that. It's, it just works, I think. The Heavy Bolter, do I think it's that brilliant? The Vartigen Heavy Bolter, Rapid Fire 2, Rapid Fire 3. And both of these weapons aren't unwieldy as well. I didn't say that. The suit doesn't have anything to stop unwieldy weapons from being unwieldy but their weapons aren't rapid fire three ammo five up and then the rest the same as the heavy bolter as i've said in other videos heavy bolters i don't massively like them due to reliability issues they're really good damage output ammo five up goes away to mitigating that i know it's three ammo dice but you will just rip something to death a lot of times but most of the time go out of ammo i think i prefer the heavy flamer just because Three ammo dice because of that heavy bolter. You're going out of ammo too much for the reliability. I like the, the threat range of the flame. Your skill access is ferocity primary. Um, you've also got the nobody pushes kin around skill. So you're not falling off. You're not getting knocked around with knockback. And ferocity to get you nerves of steel allows you to then play your brute like a brute. You're doing things with the heavy flamer before it's got nerves of steel. Strength user for the Vartage and Fist. Minus one AP, two damage, and pulverize. It's nothing incredibly wowing. So the seismic cut crusher, I had assumed it was a combat weapon until trying to look at the combat weapon rules. It's actually a temp a backup template weapon. I don't think it's a great weapon, I just think it's a little cherry on the top. With that, with not great close combat weapons, why do I think you want nerves of steel on him? So I still think you want this guy in combat. He wants to be a a counter charging close range brute he's at toughness five three wounds and strength four you still want this guy heading off the opposing gang's close combat fighters the heavy flamer makes him terrifying on the way in so he's also got the the sentry rule which increases the visibility range that it has by three inches when it's on guard duty and it also always has to be a sentry when sentries are in the scenario which i actually think works against it's like but i do actually really like the look of the model i really like i like the threat range of the flamer i think it's got solid armor which a lot of brutes don't have do i think it's worth the creds no well even thinking back to what we'd worked out earlier in the video a double melter backpack is going to do so much work in combat i don't think it's worth taking the brute as a like for a brute but it's a really cool model saying all of that we've done the skills we've done the gang list i'm gonna do the gang build which i have written out as a sample so um i was basically driving home from recording in the studio and it came to me that i've come up with my proper ridiculous gang what this gang is is a leader who has got two stone burners, so they're the backpack uh, melter pistols, light carapace, a bolter, and a hurl. Then I've got a champion, who's got an iron head melter, so that's the rapid fire melter. There is a ganger with an iron head flamer, and then two juves with two dum-dum stub pistols each. So they've got rapid fire, strength four, stub pistols now all both the champion the leader is going to have the hurl skill and the plan for it is you drive by in your rock cutter so it's the, it'll be the same theory as the list that we're about to go into which are the ones that i recorded in the studio you rock about in that and anyone that jumps in your vehicle you throw off and you upgrade your rock cutter to have a ramp so that you can board other people's vehicles and throw them off their own vehicles. That's the entire plan. You get into combat with them and you just throw them off their vehicles. So the build for the gang that I've done, um, it started out because I like to do a, a ridiculous list build whenever I'm, I'm looking over a new list. 
just rather than immediately going to the most gamey stuff. And for this, it all sort of amalgamated into one. So the, I've got a leader with dual bolt pistol and gun fighting because that's the only access to primary gu um, shooting skills that, at the start. I've got a drill master, which is the champion, with a power pick and bolt pistol. I've got a drill master with mining laser and suspenser. And so the mining laser is there to counter high toughness vehicles that you might encounter. The drill master with power pick bolt pistol is there because I really wanted the power pick in there. It's the same price as a bolt gun, so you could change that out for a bolt gun and hip shooting. I would put Hurl on the power pick bolt pistol guy. Just so that if someone jumps onto your your vehicle, you can pick them up and throw them back off, which I thought would be... Then I've got two gangers, one with a melter, one with a bolter. Uh, the melter's really solid with that rapid fire dice. The bolter, the bolter ganger, you can actually get two gangers with autos, almost the same price, five credits more expensive than one ganger with a bolter. So two autos or one bolter. I'd potentially go the autos just to get more gangers in there, stopping power in the first game. The bolter's better. For longer campaigns, I think you want the, the auto guns for shorter bolter. Um, what skills would I put on them? Well, my leader, gunfighter, drill master with pick, I'd put hurl. Or if it was a bolt gun, I'd put hip shooting. Um, then drill master with mining laser suspenser. Now, this is a really hard one. Because and this is where you run up into it is the reason you're taking in you'd probably take wisdom of the ancients with the where they scrap this creds so that you get extra creds when you destroy a vehicle. Do I like the extra creds on that? No, I don't like the idea of extra creds. As a as an arbitrator viewpoint, I don't like the idea of extra creds. As a gang as a gang builder, extra creds is pretty much always the way to go. It's because it's that's why I don't like it as a an arbitrator. I'd probably go stub into the last so that you're shooting even if you... So if you get killed, you get a last shot with your mining laser, which is potentially horrifying. So then you get 400 extra creds for a an Ash Waste campaign. I'd spend that on a rock grinder with twin-linked <laughs> auto cannons. You could also spend it on a rock grinder with no upgrades and a wolf quad. But I like the idea of the family kin unit sticking around the rock grinder which is the biggest light vehicle you can buy at the start so yeah so that's my rundown for squats i thought about doing the tactics cards but i thought i actually wanted to see how the gang interacts in the campaign before going so far into the the minutia there is some absolute crackers in there like as in amazingly good tactics Mother load during the backup the, the wrap up sequence if you've won you gain an extra 2d6 times 10 creds. That's absolutely mental. So tell me what you think of the guide. Tell me if you want any changes to the structure of the guide. So massive shout out to Monstrous Light, which is the local gaming store here in Ashton. Um if you're around Manchester, I definitely recommend checking them out. They got me the book in record time so that I could try and bring you guys this review. A massive shout out to Uncaring Lemming who wanted a shout out in every video who is my new Patreon uh, supporter. I've got shout out to Taffy because I feel mean not shouting him out as well. If you like the video hit like, subscribe for more content and there is a Patreon link below if you'd like to join Uncaring Lemming and Taffy. So see you on the next one for part two coming up as fast as I can possibly wrap my head around the next bit of the ash wastes. See you then.